Thanks for checking out this review video. So this is for season two, episode five of Creepshow, which is obviously a Shudder original series. This particular episode is hitting Shudder on Thursday, April 22nd. And since I'm putting this out ahead of time, no spoilers. Also, I can't give spoilers because that's in my terms of getting screeners for these and doing reviews ahead of time. Uh, also, if I were to give, you know, these are short stories. So if I were to give like a few sentences about the synopsis, it might ruin too much of the story. So just watch them, I would say. Now, I will say off the bat, I wasn't prepared for this particular episode just because I was assuming it would be like the normal formula for season one, which is an intro by the creep, the first story, a little intro for the second story by the creep, then the second story, then a little outro by the creep. This one, you get the intro by the creep, then it's one long story that takes up the amount of time of two stories, then you get the outro by the creep, and the intro and outro are are tied together for the creep, which I did like the intro and outro. There's something very interesting and different that they do with the creep for the intro and outro, and I did quite like that. It was very interesting. It was very different, so I like trying stuff different. And the story itself is pretty different in a few ways, and in some ways it's not. It's kind of... The core idea of it and the core conflict of what's really going on isn't that different and, you know, the underlying theme, but how they did things and what the overall story is, is different. So I like that they did something different and bold. Now, I was saying I wasn't prepared just because it's weird for me. I thought they would just stick with the formula of doing the two episodes and if they wanted to do one longer one, they would just save it for one of the specials like they had done for the holiday special one, which was amazing. Um, but I don't know. So let me talk about this one story that makes up episode five of season two. It's called Night of the Living Late Show, and it was done by Greg Nicotero, direct, directorially done by Nicotero, who's obviously done a bunch of Walking Dead stuff, obviously. And the uh, other ones that he's directed of Creep Show, the stories he's done, uh, Gray Matter, The Finger, Survivor Type, Twitterings from the Circus of the Dead, Shapeshifters Anonymous, Model Kid, Public Television of the Dead, and Pesticide. Uh, the last one, two, three, three of those were from season two. So he's directing a lot of them. So this was written by Dana Gould. Now, some people may be like, I know that name, but I don't really know the person. So if you want to make a reference to what he looks like, he was he was the main character acting in the creep show stories, Skinwalkers, or I'm sorry, Skin Crawlers from the first season. And I thought that was a good episode. I thought he did a really good job. But he's also, he's a comedian. Uh, he's done a lot of comedy stuff. He's done a lot of voice acting. He's done other acting too. But writing wise, he hasn't done a ton of stuff. But he has done uh, Toys of Terror as well as Stand Against Evil, uh, which I hear good things about Stand Against Evil. And I need to get to that. I just haven't gotten there yet. The big star, the biggest star in this, which was very nice and refreshing to see, was Justin Long. I really enjoy Justin Long. I've had the pleasure of meeting him. I actually have up there a signed uh, Tusk photo from him that he signed. Had a very good conversation with him. Um, and so it was great to see him in this. He's a very good actor. I don't know why he's not in even more stuff, honestly, because he does such a great job. But people probably know him from some things. I can't name all of it because he has a lot of credits on IMDb. But Tusk, which I think is a way better movie than people give it credit. I'll do a review on it at some point. Jeepers Creepers, Jeepers Creepers 2, Galaxy Quest, Dodgeball, Waiting, and Drag Me to Hell. Just some of the ones he's been in. So I do really like the concept behind this story. I think that it's very interesting, very intriguing from the get-go. And the setting is also really interesting, too. It's a very nice-looking house. A very interesting laid-out house, too. But um, shows you how the other... How the 1% live, basically. I wonder whose house that is. I want to know. Um, so, yeah. But I, I really do like the premise of this. Uh, Justin Long's performance is not just good for the character, for enhancing him, but he actually brings a really fun, interesting feeling. Well, not interesting, but a really fun feeling to the, the story. I think you can tell that he had a good time actually doing the acting. There's comedy to the script, which you would assume, based off what I told you about Dana Gould, who wrote it, but um, Long does a great job with it. You know, he's very experienced with that, and he brings that same type of joy and excitement and delivery to it. So I like that aspect of it. The comedy lands, too. There's nothing that, that was comedically in there. I was like, ugh. 
Um, there was stuff I didn't laugh at, but I, I didn't think it was bad at all. There is another story that hits pretty hard with horror and nostalgia. This one does. So it's kind of like in the vein of Model Kid, not specific story-wise, but in the vein of like that older horror nostalgia playing off of that. Uh, it does it pretty hard. I like that aspect of it. I think it's cool. So if you liked that horror nostalgia aspect of Model Kid, I think you could really end up liking this one. But I think this is going to be a really polarizing one. I think there are going to be some people who really hate it, some people who really love it, but that kind of feels like that's every episode, basically. Yeah. Uh, the characters, their dialogue, and their relationship actually feel very realistic. So that speaks to how good the writing is as far as making sense, being realistic, which some people will think, oh, that's just, you know, that's what scripts are like. It's not easy. It's really not easy to get that done. I've written some scripts in my life before, and it is very hard to, on the page, and then bring to life characters that feel realistic and talk in a realistic manner. And especially when you're, you know, having interactions with them, making sure that it flows properly and in a normal way. It certainly is longer than what's needed for the story. That's one of my biggest problems with this, is... It's a longer episode, I don't have a problem with that, but for what the story is, it feels like it drags, and you don't need the time taken to tell the story, or to tell it effectively. There's a lot of stuff you could have cut out, and when it, you know, I started thinking about that, I was like, there are other stories that have already happened in season two that I would much rather see expanded upon than this one, that could have really used that, and I'm... I guarantee with all of these that there's extra script that ends up getting cut down, most likely. So it just makes me wonder, like, you know, public television of the dead, like, what was the the original script like? Was there a lot more to it? In which case, I would have much rather seen that as its own episode. I really would like to see that. Um, yeah, so that's just one right off the top of my head. So I didn't, I just didn't think it needed the time. The story, the amount, the story is not rich enough to warrant the amount of time they took for it. So, I'd be interested to see a behind the scenes on this one, though, how they did it. And you'll see what I mean when you, if when you watch it, because there's a fusing of kind of like old and new, and it's not just like material wise, it's actual filmmaking wise. And I'm being kind of cryptic about that, obviously, because I want people to experience it. So you'll see what I mean when you watch it. Or if you already have, you'll understand what I mean. But I'm just very interested to see how they pulled this off. So like a mini behind-the-scenes documentary would be really cool for this one. Um, no one probably did that, but I'm just saying it would be cool. But yeah, that's just my feeling on it. Um, the ending of this is decent. Uh, it doesn't, to me, it didn't have that like huge impact to it. But then what happens with the Creeps outro adds a little more fun and interest to me. So I liked that. So I like the Creeps outro more than I like the ending of the story. Just saying. Overall, I did enjoy this, though. It was good. Obviously, I laid out some problems I see in it. But overall, I'm going to give it three out of five stars. Um, and I'm going to have to figure out where this ranks. Because like I said in one of my other reviews, I'm actually going to be doing a full ranking of all the season two episodes to tell you where I feel like they rank. And then I'm also going to do an additional video, which is ranking every creep show series story, including the specials to give you my kind of ultimate list. So you can look for that when this is all over. So I think we only have one episode left. I'm assuming if they're sticking with how season one was, but if this episode indicates anything, maybe that's not the case. Maybe they'll do more episodes than six. We'll see. But anyway, um, put your comments down here. I'd love to hear what other people are thinking about it. And if you've seen it, go ahead and put spoilers in the comments. That is fine. Just know, spoilers in the comments. Go ahead, people. Um, also, do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button. That's your best way to repay me. If you like this video or any video I've ever done, I really would appreciate it. It really does serve a purpose in you know, propelling me forward, keeping me going, because I'm just doing this to... It's a hobby, you know, I, I want to get into some good nerdy horror conversation online, and this is a great way to start it. I don't really have people in my area I can, you know, nerd, nerdily, deeply talk about horror with, so this is my way to connect with that. So, but anyway, yeah, hit the subscribe for me, and also hit the notification bell button, 
that way you'll know when I'm putting up new reviews like this or doing unboxings or any of that stuff. But regardless, I really do appreciate you taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.